In this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to trade options on the Thinkorswim trading platform. So first things first, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head over to the All Products tab. Now under All Products, this is where you are going to see the options chain. The options chain is how you're going to go about identifying what contracts you want to buy. So first, obviously, we are going to see that we're presented with the expiration dates. Now, when it comes to buying or trading options, we first have to decide at which date we would like our option contracts to expire. Now, the closer the expiration date, the riskier. The further out the expiration date, the safer. So let's say we want to buy not super risky, right? Not super safe, kind of moderate contracts. Well, I would look to buy contracts at least two months out. And that means today is September 26. So we're going to want to go out to November. Let's open up these November 15th contracts. And now what you can see is that we've got calls on the left and puts on the right. Again, a put you're essentially betting on the direction of that stock to go down and a call you're betting on the direction of that stock to go up. And so based off of however you've decided from a technical perspective or fundamental, what direction you're going to bet on that stock going, well, we're going to go about buying those specific contracts. Now I like look at the volume, the open interest, interest and theta. You can look at a lot more. Obviously, you can see all of the Greeks. I'm not even going to get into the Greeks. They're not even something you have to know. The only Greek really that you want to pay attention to is going to be theta. Theta is decay over time. And with option contracts, it's essentially pay to play. Each day you hold those contracts, they're going to cost to hold. So the more days you have to hold a set of contracts, those contracts are going to get more and more expensive to hold. So theta, we can see here is 0.26. Now it's 0.26 and this is how options are price. So 25.75 or 26. This is actually $2,575 and this is $26. And that is because options are leveraged 100 to 1. Buying one options contract essentially gives you the right to own 100 shares of that stock. So we've got what's called in the money and out of the money contracts. In the money contracts are going to be blue. Out of the money contracts are going to be dark. In the money contracts are safer. Out of the money contracts are riskier. In the money is going to be anything below the current share price when it comes to calls out of the money is going to be anything above the current share price when it comes to puts. You can see Tesla is currently trading at 255. That means if we want to buy in the money contracts, we need to choose a strike price that is anything at or below the current share price. So the 255s are going to be in the money. That's why they're blue. Whereas on the other hand, when it comes to puts, it's the opposite. If we want to buy safer contracts in the money contracts, well, we look at the Tesla share price being 255. That means we're going to want to buy contracts with a strike price above 255. I don't like explaining it this way, but fundamentally that is how options work. You're choosing an expiration date and you're choosing a strike price. And that means you're saying by this date, I think this stock is going to be trading at or below or at or above this current price based off of whether you're going to buy calls or puts. And then, like I said, if you're buying in the money contracts, those are going to be safer. You're not going to make as much, whereas the out of the money contracts are going to be riskier, but you're going to have the opportunity to make more. Now, next, when we're ready to buy our contracts, we've chosen our expiration date and our strike price, we're going to go under the ask side and you should see that it says buy. Please make sure that you are never selling a contract. What happens if you sell something that you don't own? Well, you could essentially put your account in a position of maximum exposure. You could essentially lose more than you even have in your account. Now, if you right click again under the ask side and you hit buy, well, this is going to pull up the order. We can see here we've got single contracts we want to buy. Just make sure that it says buy and then we can choose the amount of contracts that we actually want to purchase. Position effect, we'll leave that on auto. We've got our symbol. We've got the expiration date. We've got the strike price. Again, we're looking at buying these calls and then the current price of the contracts. We're going to go in with a limit order and let's talk about that. Limit versus market order. If we go in with a limit order, it's going to let us specify the price at which we want to pay for the contracts. We can say, hey, we want to get filled at $24.50. Again, that's $2,450, not $24.50. And you can see here we've got the mid and the nat. Now, essentially, this is what is known as the spread. We've got the low end and the high end of the spread. Now, when you're buying contracts, just like anything in life, you normally want to pay as little as possible to buy those. So we want to pay the least amount possible, which means we would like to pay $25.54. And you can see the market's open. So 
the spread is moving as people are trading these contracts. Remember, the stock market is a marketplace. So you're essentially either buying contracts from someone or you're selling your contracts to someone. So we want to pay the least amount possible when we buy the contracts. Whereas a market order, you're just saying, hey, I'm okay to pay whatever someone else is willing to sell me these contracts for. Now with market orders, you'll essentially almost all the time get filled immediately. Uh, whereas a limit order, you might actually never get filled, but you can specify the price you want to get filled at. And if no one sells those contracts to you at that price, you don't get in the trade, but at least you didn't overpay. So that is what happens. Uh, typically you will pay more than those contracts are really worth. So you'll go in with the market order, you'll get that contract, but you'll see that you might already be down a percent or two. That's just the nature of market orders. So if you really want to get in that trade, you go in with a market. And if you have some patience, if you want to wait, you go in with a limit order. Now let's say we're ready to go in with our limit order. We want to get filled at 1165. We're going to buy one contract and then all you're going to do is confirm and then you're going to hit send that order is going to go through you're either going to get filled or not again if we go buy and we change this to a market order we hit confirm and send that order will get filled almost immediately the only reason that order wouldn't get filled would be if there is lack of volume and open interest or no volume and open interest now essentially what this means is today on this given day well we've seen that there has been about 1289 now it's 90 contracts exchanged and 9307 in volume well when you take 3027 minus 1000 you know, 300, let's just round, say that's about 8,000 contracts in the open interest that haven't been accounted for in today's volume. That means that prior today, there were 8,000 contracts that were purchased that are currently held in someone's account. And why the volume and open interest is important is because we want to look at the spread. We want to make sure that we are not going to get stuck in those contracts. Now I'm going to pull up a random stock and I'll give you an example as to what I mean. Now here's an example. I just looked up APLD. Okay, I've actually never heard of this ticker before. And you can see here under the volume, we can see a lot of NAs. That means that no contracts have been traded today. And then when you look under the open interest, again, we could see, well, zero, zero, zero. That means that no one has bought or sold these contracts today. And then no one owns these contracts at all. And if we go to try to buy one, we can see that there is a massive spread. So we could see 715 and 820 over a $100 spread. If we send an order through, Will we get filled? Probably not. Is there a chance that we will get filled and not be able to get out of that position? Yes. So you just have to be very careful trading contracts that have NAs that have zero open interest could be dangerous because you won't just pay way more than you should. You won't just get in that position and potentially be down 20% immediately, but you might not actually be able to get out of that trade. And if I go way out to the January contracts back into 2027, these are contracts that you would probably buy and never be able to get out of. And look at how large this spread is. 395 and 580. I mean, that's crazy. Just stay away from contracts with no volume or open interest. So again, all you have to do is search for a stock under all products. You open the options chain, obviously choosing your expiration date. We wouldn't want to trade these because there's NA, but if you were going to buy these, you would go under the ask side. You choose your strike price. You'd make sure that says buy. You'd right click. You choose the amount of contracts that you want to purchase, whether you'd like to go in with a limit or a market order, and you You'd confirm and send that through. So I've been trading for the last eight years and I'm actually going to give you access to not only see, but copy my exact trades to trade live with me every single morning and to get my help as a coach and a mentor in this space. I will put a link in the description below where you can join my mentorship group. There's a whole lot more that I offer if you're looking to make money in the stock market. Subscribe for more. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.